Hi, my name is Ed. I'm a retired supply officer and a solution advisor at Shark Cage. Our slogan at Shark Cage is always ready. We ensure the unit is ready to deploy without packing and without extensive logistics and planning. When the warfighter arrives in theater, they can operate immediately out of the shark cage exactly like they did in home station, always ready. The unit stores gear in the shark cage, which can be easily transported via most military platforms, land, sea, or air. To ensure maximum flexibility when it comes to strategic, operational, and tactical assets, the same shark cage must fit in several different platforms. Even though we do not make the shipping containers, we only make what goes in them know pretty much everything there is to know about them. In this video, we will share some of that knowledge. We will go through some of the most common military transportation platforms and explain how they tie together. So sit back and enjoy. Shipping containers, also called connex boxes in the military, might be the single most important invention in modern logistics. Today, they are everywhere. If you lined up all the shipping containers in the world along the equator, they would circle the globe four times. Clearly, the shipping container is an important platform in military operations, but where did it all start? Before containerization, goods were usually handled as bulk cargo. Manually handling made transportation costly, time-consuming, and unreliable. The first sign of something resembling a shipping container appeared in England in the late 18th century and was used for coal handling. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, including over the course of two world wars, many different containers were manufactured. At the time, several different and incompatible systems were used in the U.S. alone. This made the logistics incredibly complex. It all changed when Malcolm McLean, an entrepreneur born in Max, North Carolina, had an idea that would change the world. His idea was to make a container that could be taken off the trucks, transported by ship, and put back on the trucks for local delivery. On April 26, 1956, his first container ship set off from the port of Newark to the port of Houston, carrying 58 containers. His invention became the first intermodal shipping container we know today. In 1968, the International Organization for Standardization defined the standard 20-foot shipping container by specifying the shape and position of the corners and the door opening, as well as the minimum internal and maximum external dimensions. In theory, this ensures that containers produced all over the world are the same size. In practice, this is not completely true. Most containers have more internal space than the standard defines, but the corners are always identical. An interesting fact is that the standard 20-foot container is actually 19 feet 10 inches, not 20 feet. This way, two 20-foot containers can fit inside a 40-foot bay. This deviation is referred to as the ISO gap. But to keep it simple, let's assume the standard container measures 20 feet. This standard also defines a capacity of more than 50,000 pounds, which is about the same as 15 Ford Focus cars. According to ISO standards, fully loaded containers must be stackable six high, but higher ratings can be achieved. If the container passes all the tests, a CSC plate is issued and attached to the container. To obtain container safety convention approval, the container is subjected to numerous tests. Now let's take a look at the most common sizes in the ISO container family. It's easier to understand the sizes when comparing them with a 20-foot container. For commercial freight, larger containers are more popular, but in the military, we see the opposite trend. First, we have the larger containers, the 40-foot and the 45-foot. The 40-foot container is twice as long as a 20-foot, but the 45-foot is slightly longer to match the European box trucks. Next, Vicon is just half the size of the 20-foot container. Next comes the Tricon at one-third the size of a 20-foot container. Lastly is the Quadcon, which is one-quarter of the size. The prefix in the names of the smaller containers reveals how many can be connected to form a 20-foot container. Quad 4, Tri 3, and Bi 2. Since the door is on the opposite side of the 20-foot container, the depth of the Quadcon and the Tricon is the same as the width of the 20-foot container, 8 feet. Since the Quadcon is one quarter of a 20-foot container, it is almost five feet wide. The Tricon is almost six and a half feet and measures six feet, five inches. To make this even more complicated, containers come in different heights. The standard is eight feet, six inches, but the 20-foot container comes in a lower eight feet version and the taller high cube, which measures nine feet, six inches. 
20 foot containers are most commonly the standard height, while the smaller containers, usually 8 feet tall, and the larger containers are high cube. The 8 foot container used to be very popular in the military because it fits in an old C-130. The new C-130, however, can accommodate standard height containers, making the 8 foot container less common nowadays. The Tricon and the Quadcon are based on the 8 foot version of the 20 foot container, but divided by three or four respectively. The lower 6 feet, 10 inch version of the Quadcon is also quite common and serves as a standard for the United States Marine Corps. Weight capacity is different for each size. Larger containers can take more, while smaller containers can take less. The weight capacity is not perfectly proportional to the container size. The 20 foot container can take up to 52,900 pounds of cargo. The Bicon can take less than half of that with a capacity of 22,400 pounds. The 40-foot container has a capacity of 67,200 pounds. The United States military continues to use small containers that are strongly reminiscent of the transporter and the Conex boxes in the 1950s and 60s. As mentioned earlier, the Tricon is one-third the length of the 20-foot container and the Quadcon is one-quarter the length. Both the Tricon and the Quadcon come in different variants. The Tricon comes in five variants, with differing positions and number of doors. The most common types are the Tricon 1 and 2. The Tricon 1 has only one door at the end of the container, and the Tricon 2 has doors on both ends. The Quadcon is available with different heights as well as different door configurations, but naming convention is not consistent among manufacturers. The Quadcon, most commonly used, has one door and measures either 8 feet in height an ISO standard or 6 feet 10 inches. The Tricon and the Quadcon can be linked together and handled like a normal 20 foot container. Notice that the doors are accessible even when multiple containers are connected. We hope that you have learned something from watching our video. Please visit SharkCage.com and check out our platform guide. Here you can also select the container you have and see which Shark Cage will fit best.